Right. Nevertheless, um, the book definitely underwent a few adulterations. If you were a purist, then you might say, okay, the book has been adulterated. And there were some of those purists throughout, like Ming and Qing dynasty, who were anti Wang Suhe, who said, oh, already Wang Suhe totally adulterated the book. And then throughout history, so many stuff was put, so much stuff was put in that was not originally by Zhang Nunjing. So we're going to get all, take all that stuff out, right? Because we just want to have pure Zhang Nunjing. The futility of that, to me, makes me think like, why not then just embrace it all? Even other family traditions of the Shahanun, like the Jingwei Gu, uh, the Guilin Guben, which is the antique Guilin edition, which was only retrieved in the 1970s, is. Shahanlun, based on Song version with some of the pulse chapters and stuff inside of it, but tons of other stuff. Which and and, it, and of the Guilin Guben, we know that it is just it was the Shahanlun, but there was a lot of stuff entered into it by this family that was in charge that that had this treasure that was their family treasure, and that's the the skill set that they taught from generation to generation, right? So it's an original lineage, but it's also a lot of other stuff in it. And I think that's just phenomenal. That's great. I love all that because you can learn from that. If, if some person in time found it pertinent enough to put it in the, in, in the text, then there's definitely something to learn in it for us. Right? So I, I love all of that stuff. I'm, I'm definitely more uh, embracing rather than just trying to cut things out. I'm just definitely more in favor of like taking it all in and, and putting it through your own filter and then you can learn from it. That's more important to me. So there must have been multiple streams of Shan Hanlun transmission happening, but it was completely underground because that was all Han Dynasty material, right? So that was completely underground. And then gradually, 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 it started to surface. And it officially surfaced in Tang Dynasty, right? It traveled to Japan. Right? And then it became the basic foundation for Japanese uh, herbal medicine, which was called Han medicine, right? Tampo, the Han method. And, um, and, and then, of course, Sun Tzu Miao, prominent uh, uh, kind of uh, the medical Wikipedia webmaster of the Tang Dynasty, um, Sun Tzu Miao, and then the other one, uh, the rivaling company run by Wang Tao, uh, you know, they both kind of came out with their big medical books of the Tang Dynasty, right? They're just, they're just like collecting, widely collecting all these kind of formulas and methods and treatments and theories and all of that stuff, putting it in their books, you know, and uh, publishing it. And, um, and there you have it. And there you see the Shahalan surface. And in, 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 in Sun Tzu book, he even says, he said, you know, the first half of his life, he never even saw the Shahalan, right? And then ultimately, he says in his book, Oh, um, there are these, uh, these masters south of the river, right? Jiang uh, Nian Zhu Shi, Mi Zhong Jing Fang Pu Xie, right? Like they're, they're keeping the Zhong Jing methods or the Zhong Jing formulas secret and they are not revealing them, right? So he was probably calling them on his cell phone all the time, like, dude, give it up. And they're like, no, who are you? Prank caller, prank caller. And uh, <laughs> dissing on Sun and everything. And so, but ultimately, he was, the, he, they, gave him, they gave him a copy, right? And then well, he said, wow, this is, this is medicine unlike anything I've ever seen. Right? And he literally praises it with that kind of strong verbiage in his book. 